welcome back to the Full Style Inc. channel for another big tea, yo. My name is Nadia and I am the creator and founder of Full Style Inc. Today's video is going to be something different, something interesting, unique. Um, we are in the process of a movie. Yay! Finally, 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 for you guys who have been here, for the long haul know that I have been living in my grandmother's house. I was her primary caregiver for a very, very long time. And she has been gone for um, almost two years. So it's finally time to pack things up, move out, get my own place, just, just start afresh. And before I do that, before I start the official process of packing up, I wanted to kind of bookmark this moment in time. I wanted to take a moment and just seal this as the beginning of something. Even though this is not taking the beginning, because I began when I was in Ohio, then I was up in my room, then I was in the corner of this room, and then I took over the whole room. But I wanted to bookmark this. I wanted to stamp this. I wanted to seal this in history as the beginning of something. So I wanted to do a sewing room tour. I wanted to do a room tour of how I have stuff set up, how I operate and function. I've never really done this. You guys just kind of just seen glimpses of it. So I just want to take you guys through different areas so that you guys can see. And I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm thinking of doing one of my bedroom because my bedroom also has a lot of significance on the growth of me as a creator, as a styler, as a fashion designer, as a content creator, just all the things. So if you guys are interested to see that, let me know. Without further ado, because it's hot, I'm going to get to it. And I'm going to begin here with where all my fabric is, with the majority of my fabric and materials. Here we have um, this cute little wooden shelf that I originally brought for display for my pop-up, for when I do pop-ups. And I still I still kind of use it from time to time, but I haven't been doing a lot of pop-ups because um, of the season and then just haven't done a lot. So I've been using it to stash my fabric, to hold my fabric so that I can see it. Um, it's not in the most cleanest situation right now, but I'm showing you guys how it looks. I did clean up for you guys, but let's be honest. So on top, I have some patterns that I want to use or I am loving and using this season. So I have different patterns here. Some I made myself, some simplicity patterns, some mood patterns, some other patterns that I'm using for things that I want to make this summer, this season. Um, patterns that I use and I'm loving and I want to make more items with that pattern so that's here and then I have a cute little bag that I'm working on and um, some other bags inside of it I'm not going to show you that because that is private um, so I have fabric here fabric from clients fabric that I thrifted um, fabric that I purchased like actual at a fabric store and then as you go further down, I have like scrap fabric, a fabric that I've used for previous projects, but are not technically scraps because they're big enough to make something else with. Like you can make another top, you can make a hair wrap, you know, a bag. So they're not technically scrap fabric. So I have that all here. So this is this situation. And I really love how this looks. Um, on the back end, I have one of my cutting boards and like a huge portfolio folder behind the mirror. And then I have the mirror here, which I use for my try-ons um, for myself, as well as for my clients who come in, they can see themselves. This was an item that I really, really was interested in getting, and this was an investment. And this mirror has a story. I kid you not, I almost lost everything trying to get this mirror i jumped out of a lift to run in to pick up the mirror after calling to see if they had it still available at marshall's because i seen it like weeks ago and i didn't have the money for it then and the uber the lift left me with my bag in the car that wasn't thick on my half <sighs> but i got my i got my mirror 
and I had to transfer, I had to pay for another Uber to get it back to the house all the way from up north without breaking it. And I use this for my pop-ups as well. That's why it has my um, boutique name on the top. So moving on. So this way I have a bunch of miscellaneous things. I have some just like some dry flowers before. I have my grandmother's old sewing kit. I have a box full of stuff that's like ribbons and other things. Um, I have one of my my very first sewing kit which is this cutie right here that my mom brought me back when I was in Ohio when I first started. I have a head form from when I was doing more of the wrap turbans and when I did cute little headband. I have a vintage, vintage crystal decanter just for a little decor. I found it in the back of a closet and I cleaned it up and I was like, I'm gonna keep this and put it on my bar one day. So right now I just sit a candle because I like smells good as I work. As you get down here, I have some supplies for my jewelry making. Old school, old schools know that I made a lot of my jewelry, earrings, necklaces. I'm doing some bedazzling on some items. So I have some of it here. Some of this stuff have already been packed up um, because it was just kind of like in the way and I just started putting stuff in bins. So I left that there so you guys can see. That's usually where it's housed and there's like another basket, another box. And then I have these cute little boxes from Joann's. And this one at the bottom has the rest of my patterns that are not on this top shelf. Those are like more seasonal patterns I'm no longer using, patterns from clients that I've made things for them. And those patterns sit in there until they're able to be used again. All right, we're gonna go around the room like a U shape. Okay, right here we have this very old vintage. Practically, if we when we move it, it's definitely gonna possibly fall apart. But it is this wheeled glass iron um, cart that my grandmother had most of her plants on, and some of my mom's and mother plants are still there. I've been using it, of course, as storage. And right here at the bottom, I have some supplies for when I'm working. I have some markers, some canvases, some DIY watercolor paints that I take back and forth to school and amongst other things. And then on top, I do have some, my, my mini iron and my steamer and my ironing board because the only other outlet in this room is behind this. And so I set up my ironing board and steamer here to press everything out and to iron everything. So this is that space. It's not much to look at. I just wanted to share it and I just completely skip over it. We have another space that is purely there because it was here before I was here. And it's this very old chair from my grandmother's furniture set that I that she had most of my life most of my life and it just has a bunch of bags and stuff on it so I'm gonna move past that over here we have another section of bags but these bags are full of scrap fabrics um other fabrics blankets curtains stuff that I want to use but have not yet to use padding um um, stuffing for when I was doing some other things and so this is basically where this only looks like this now because I started packing and I started to organize in order to pack but I'm gonna zoom you guys out and I'm gonna go back over there so you we can get a better look as to what's happening over here all right Dollars. So this is the third, second corner of my sewing space. As you can see, it's not a lot. I really have to share it with like the air conditioning unit and everything. But these bins have been brought out of what used to be my grandmother's room that is now my sister's room because I was using them to storage 
some of my things for my shop and I would take them back and forth to uh, pop-ups. So I have this one on top that has a bunch of denim, that has a, just a bunch of stuff that I want to recycle, ideals I have, things that I haven't thrown away because I am a creator and I have ideals for. I have that rest of the jewelry making stuff here, like I said, um, for my own personal use as well as the creation. Some shoes that I was DIYing that I may revisit. A box, a bend of clothes that need mending, that need, you know, to be upcycled or just need a little tweaking. I have some curtains, some comforters that I definitely want to make some coats and dresses out of. They just sit here again. All of this stuff is just. It's gonna be put to use, but it's here because I don't really have no else place to put it. And as we come this way, I'm gonna have to move around. Oh. So this stuff over here, we have my dress form. She has seen better days. I have my old sewing machine, my very first sewing machine, a sewing machine that my friend let me borrow that I now technically own. Um, for when I was sewing masks during the pandemic. And then I have more supplies and materials that's strictly for the creation. So stuff that is seasonal, like my scarves and blankets and stuff that I have ideals for the creation. And then on top of that, I have all of my display and decor stuff for the creation for when I do pop-ups. On top, it's not really a bin, it's just laid up on top. It's a bunch of the clothes that I've already made or own that I need to get to mending. Like, I need to replace a button, fix a seam, add a zipper, clothes that I definitely wanna wear this summer that needs to be mended. So I try to do those when I'm in between projects or I have to hop on a Zoom call or meeting and I have some free time on my hands. So. That's what that area looks like. And then down here at the bottom, this bag is some fabric scraps that I told you that are not small fabric scraps, but are also not big enough to make a complete thing out of. So I have enough here to make a few tops and I need some summer tops. So this is going to be a future project, a future video of using scrap fabric to make some summer tops. So you guys should be seeing it in a few weeks. And then right here, I have some trash bags that I use for fabric scraps that will eventually be put into something else. And then actual trash for like paper and like thread and stuff like that. So I'm gonna pan you guys back around to the main part of the show, which is the sewing machine and the red cart. Here we are, sellers, at the final little part section of our room tour. And honestly, this is my favorite part. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of this room. Obviously, this is where I sit most of the time here in my sewing machine. Um, how I have things set up for my convenience. I moved, I recently moved my dressing form from over in the corner where that chair is. Um, it was just like sitting there to here so that I'm able to get to her closely. Again, she is struggling. She's been through some things, but she has been a workhorse, even if she just been like pure display. On top, I have a project that I'm currently working on that you may not see because it's not going to plan. Um, here at the table, I have my sewing machine. My beautiful brother that my mom got me literally January 2020 before all hit vocals um this has been my hitter she this thing right here she she's been working for me i do need to eventually get her serviced i am noticing a few things i don't clean her as often as i should and i know that's on me but i do want to get her serviced um because 
I need her working at full capacity for what's to come. As, along with the other two sewing machines that I have, I've used those for sewing classes that I was doing, again, before, before 2020. And so, um, I need to get I need to get her service. So, as I sit here, I have my laptop here that I use to watch YouTube videos or other creative shows like The Hype, Project Runway, Next in Fashion, Glow Up, any creative show, competition show or movie that I watch as I create, it really helps me to just stay tapped in. It gives me ideals and inspirations. So, as I move on, Oh, I know I'm gonna get asked this question because I've seen others get asked this question. The chair that I'm sitting on is literally the chair from this table. This table is a historical artifact that I've destroyed. It is a vintage wood, iron, wrought iron, wrought iron, black iron table with the removable sleeves in the middle. Sleeves or leaves? Room, thank you removable leaves in the middle this table has been part of this dining room again most of my life i don't know if it was there all my life but most of my life i remember sitting at this table this dining room has so much life and stuff it has so much stuff going on there was an armoire there was china cabinet there was a high boy i'm showing my age there was a high boy over there with a record player it was all types of stuff on this table in this dining room but this table was always here with this chandelier with these iron chairs and i am sitting on one of these iron chairs it is not comfortable at all not even a little bit i have um cushions i have pillows that i've made pillows that i've stolen blankets to cover the edges um, because the edges are iron and when the cushion sticks in on the actual chair it kind of like pinches into my thighs but I have piled up with pillows and cushions and blankets and a little mini pillow that sits in my back so that I'm able to look comfortable and then I have a box underneath the table that has my presser foot on it and that I sit my feet on it sometimes to keep my feet elevated because I can sit so long that my feet does swell up. That does happen. So, and as you can see here, I have another board game box game. Um, these are vintage themselves. To sit my computer, my laptop on, because this table is a dining room table, it's not as high as I would like and need it to be. So I sit my sewing machine on top of something so it's a little bit more elevated so that I can, it's, I'm not hunching all the way over to do work. Um, and that goes for the same thing with cutting on this table not fun but I get it done and that's just part of what I'm showing you guys how you don't need much to get started remember guys I started upstairs in my room on my little desk that I cleared off every time I needed to sew or create so moving on next to me I have my little rolly cards I love this thing so so very much um and I move her from Location to location, location to location. She usually doesn't sit right here. She usually sits on the other side of you, on the other side of the wall that's right here. Um, but I wanted to keep her here so you guys can just focus on this space. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in so we can get into the details because this is this is eye candy. I am very proud of how she looks and how I set her up. Um, so we're gonna zoom in so we can see the details. All right, stylist, the piece a resistance. Um, this is, I don't want to say my pride and joy because I feel like that's a little extreme, but this is my baby, my little rolling cart. I got her, I want to say her, I got her definitely doing the pandemic, definitely doing the Panera Bread, uh, because who wasn't shopping, who wasn't buying storage, who wasn't doing the things during that time, and she definitely, I definitely got her on sale. I definitely got her for $20 instead of the, either $20 or $30 instead of the $60 that she usually calls at Michael's. And I don't even think Michael sell this type of cart anymore. And I knew I wanted her in red because my brand colors for Full Style Ink is red. And now all my brands have red in it. It's kind of like became my signature. So, my cart. Um, I got the one with all the bells and whistles. I don't even have all the fixtures on her on the back. 
because they was just getting in the way and I really wasn't using them. But I really, really love this because I have all of my, my majority use rulers um, here, as well as all of my scissors, my cutting instruments. I have stuff for fabric. So this, or not, I have stuff for paper and fabric. So this I use for paper, so like pattern paper, um, yeah, padding paper. I have a rotary blade and a pair of scissors for that. I have pinking shears and another pair of scissors and then just regular scissors for cutting fabric as well as a rotary blade. I have measuring tapes and my curve ruler. Um, definitely brought that as an influence, influenced by Angela from Blueprint DIY to buy a curve ruler. It is a change, game changer. Here at the top, I just love this. I love this, it's so cute. So I have this old base that definitely came from one of somebody sending my grandma some flowers. And I have it full of thread. Getting my thread out of this is slightly annoying because I have to, if, the, if, the, if a color is all the way at the bottom, I literally have to dump all of the thread out to get it rumbled through. And then remember to take my time to put it back in so that it can all go back in correctly. Um, so that it fits. So not the most practical of storages but it's something that is work it, it has is working because i really don't have any other options besides putting it all like in a box or like a bowl so i have it all stacked in here like this so i try so that i can see the colors but sometimes there are colors threads in between so that's when i have to like dump all the stuff out um i have this cute little vintage candle holder this is so cute. I don't know where this came from. I don't think I brought it at a thrift store. I definitely 100% possibly found this downstairs in my grandmother's basement. And it had a candle in it. And I just like melted, um, not melted, I put it on the stove and got that candle wax and the uh, wick out. And I just used it to hold another pair of scissors, some pliers, some, um, what's them called? Things that you use to turn straps inside out, some glue, just miscellaneous. And it's just, it's really cute. I can't wait to put this somewhere with and be like with other vintage sewing decor stuff and be like on display. And then I have just a, a, a little cup here that I got from when I went to a natural hair thing. And it has all my pens, my pencils, my little thing that I use for my patterns. My little nippers, my seam rippers, some tweezers, my um, chalk marker, a lighter for lighting my candles or burning my um, zipper ends, elastic ends, ribbon ends, stuff like that. You guys know some, uh, what's this called? Nail file because you ever got your nails caught on thread? Ooh, and it pulled, baby. It's not cute, it's not fun. And I usually have like some lip balm in there, but I need to restock that. That is something that recently ran out. And then here I have a bunch of little, cute little containers and storage. I did, again, during the pandemic, did order a bunch of stuff from Joann's, like those cute little satchel boxes that I showed you with my patterns and stuff in. Um, as well as this box for thread. And I have another one somewhere else because my brother's sewing machine takes different size thread than my singer. So I have a separate one for the single one. Um, this cute little thing, which holds most, no, holds all of my needles as well as most of my sewing foot for my sewing machine. So I keep them all up in here. And this thing opens one way. And then I flip it and it opens another way. So it has like my walking foot, my uh, quilter foot, and some more thread, more bobbins and thread. And then my little screw, screwy thing to change out my feet. And then I have, um, what is these things called? Little snaps, look, they're not eyelets. The little snap things. And then my wide, my uh, bias tape little kit from um, Madam So, who I love. And if I could buy the rest of her things off Amazon, I would. I also have like this cute little bow 
Again, something I definitely found in my grandmother's in the closet somewhere in my grandmother's room. This cute little bow that has just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in here. I sit my cushion, my pen cushion on top. I have another lighter. Don't know why that's in there. Uh, I think this is lip balm. Little plug-in for my uh, laptop, my charger, a thimble, a nail clipper, because again, sewing and having nails and your nails are not well manicured and fouled, it'll get you that natural hair. And then like some chalky soil and a bunch of just other miscellaneous stuff. That needs to be organized, but I don't have places to put some of that stuff, so that's where it lives. Then I have cute little um, tin box of all of my clips that I use when I'm working with thicker material or softer material that really doesn't take well with pins. I have another old candle. It's one of my favorite candles in the fall that has all of my fabric weights. And technically these are not fabric weights. These are actual washers that I brought from an actual hardware store that I use for fabric weights. I do want to get some like cute actual fabric weights, but again, y'all, these washers cost like 25 maybe 30 cents at the hardware store have a good time i have a, a little container full of safety pins of different sizes and a bunch of little stuff back here some labels that i sew on to my stuff for the creation i have a little notebook for driving down ideas some hand needles um this ruler that is for my sewing machine to guide my seam allowance that I really need to use more. And then my hem roller, again from Madam. So um, all of this stuff will be linked, not down below. The link for my Amazon storefront will be linked down below for anything that I can find that I've purchased and anything that's similar. So as we come down, we can see more of what's going on here. I have the serger thread that I definitely use. I have more large mason jars full of, like this one is full of buttons. Just a bunch of buttons. I have a large base full of elastic and by binding and bias tape. So bias tape, binding tape, and elastic goes in here. Again, not absolutely practical in sourcing and organizing, but that's what I'm working with, y'all. The creativity for me. And then I have some bags of like zippers. And then I have another large, um, that doesn't go in there. Another large mason jar full of like parts for my sewing machine. I forgot to mention, cause I know somebody was going to ask. These are projects that I need to finish. And then I have my dress back there from Bridgerton because I need to fix the lining. But I'm not in no rush cause I don't see me wearing her anytime soon. But I do have this hanging up on the back of the door. Usually this door is open. But beyond it is the kitchen, and that's none of you guys' business. So, and then I have this cute little wall set up over here with some frames and like a cute little flower. It, it used to be more on top, but this wall is ghetto and it's a century old. And the concrete doesn't like stuff to stick in it or to adhere to it. So that's why we got them in little random little spots. But I use this in the background of my Zoom calls anytime I'm on live or I'm hopping on something and I want a nice little cute backdrop but I don't want to be up in my room. So that's also why you see paint back there. All right, stylers, that is it. That is the room tour of what's been going on in the world of not in the creator, Full Stop Inc., the creation boutique, how I've been moving and operating in this space for almost two years. Because I was down here, I moved down here probably like 2019, maybe 2020, um, after my grandmother got really, really sick and she came back from the hospital rehab. And I couldn't really hear her 
or hear anything upstairs if I had the air conditioning on and my sewing machine going at the same time. So I slowly started to move down here. That was that was some issues about it. There was some there was some issues, but those people could really couldn't say nothing because they wasn't living here. So um, after a while, I just slowly started to take over the space. And then when my grandmother passed, I definitely took over the space. I ripped down the curtains, which revealed so many other things. But <laughs> I kind of just took it over so that I'm able to move around it and flow and just operate. And so I wanted to film this because, you know, stuff like this needs to be remembered. You need to not to not to keep you down, but to keep you humbled, aware how you started and where you came from. And I know for me, I'm not gonna forget it, but I like to have documentation of it. So you know, when people come up and say something like, you know, check my track, track my track record, okay. I was in a century old house at my grandmother's century old dining room table doing what needs to be done, having to move the table around back and forth to get in and around the sewing machine, trying not to hit my head on this ancient chandelier every time I went to cut fabric or whatever. I just wanted to just show you how I started, how it was going on. And the next time you will see anything about a workspace will be when I'm in my new place and I get to decorate it completely from scratch. I mean, painting, I get to hammer things or nail things or drill things into the wall. I get to hang up a pegboard. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have like a real sewing table. I cannot wait. The content and the DIYing that I'm about to do in this workspace and in my, just the house, I'm gonna be creating all over that place. But the workspace, my sewing room, mm, I'm gonna have an area for like packing orders. Oh, I'm gonna have like a cute little waiting area for my clients. Oh my God, the possibilities. So yes, I just want to show you guys that. I'm gonna let you guys go because it's hot and I really wanna put the air conditioning back on. Thank you guys so much as always for watching. Thank you guys so much for rocking with me all these years my day ones you already know what it is if you new here thank you so much for sticking around thank you so much for clicking on the video thank you thank you um stick around make sure you like subscribe and ring that bell darling so you never miss an upload you never miss a video because i got some things to get off my chest before i completely pack all of this up and then i'm in limbo for i don't know how long until we get settled in and started with the new space all right guys thank you so much for watching i love you so so very much remember that you are loved and you are worthy to be loved until next time stylers Woo!